thanks so much for visiting my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I paint a pretty red flower design on this truffle bowl. Uh, this bowl is awesome for layered desserts, layered vegetables or like salads, that type of thing. Also great for a centerpiece if you would like to fill it with water after you've painted your design and put floating candles in it along with cut flowers. It makes a beautiful centerpiece. We are going to be using, or I'm going to be using, fresh foliage. All my paints are folk art paints. Some are multi-surface, some are um, enamel. Engine red. School bus yellow. Thicket. And wicker white. Brushes I'm going to be using are a three-quarter inch flat brush and a one-stroke plaid brush, a 12 inch, uh, number 12, not 12 inch, but number 12 flat brush by plaid, and then my trusty fine liner, which is a Westonia fingernail brush. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be doing my flowers. I'm trying to make sure I don't get too much yellow because I want mostly red on here. But I'm trying to basically double load my brush so that it is primarily the red. Not sure how successful I'm going to be, but anyways, double loaded it. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I always like to start at the top, and I always do a couple little strokes just to get it started. Now, I am very funny about opaqueness. I really want my, my flowers to be opaque. So if they don't seem to be that way, it kind of bothers me. But I'm just doing a stroke. It's more like the wiggle stroke. Oh no, I got green. How did I do that? Go figure. That's not what I wanted. Try this again. Definitely not what I wanted. And then I'm going to go like this and just keep going. Now you can turn your, your design as you're doing it and just keep stroking it. If I were going to be using this and paint, painting it to sell, I would probably go ahead and go over it again because for me it's not as thick as I'd like to have it, paint-wise. I'm going to go over this one again. Okay. Alright, so then I'm going to continue doing this. And I might want to do, try to do a little bit smaller version. And again, with not having as much space, if you've seen some of my other videos, some of these are kind of tight, especially if you're getting into bigger, bigger designs. So you might have to watch. Now with this one, on all of the ones that are round, where you could go around them, for the purpose of the video, I'm, I'm not doing all the sides. But if I were in fact doing them to actually keep the design on there, I would do all the way around. That's just my thought. And these are coming out pretty big, so I just need to watch the space because I really only wanted to do the front. And if I make them so big, I'm going to actually end up being able to do more than the front. And then guess what? I'll be sticking my fingers in it. And that's what I try not to do. Try, try, try. Alright. 
So we've got that. They're just kind of indifferent. Now I didn't I intended them to not be lined up straight across. And I'm sorry if you see some extra fl fleck of paint because I do try to brush these off or not brush them off but wash them off so that I can use them for my videos. Okay so for my leaves I am going to be using the smaller brush and I'm putting it in thicket, double loading it with the fresh foliage. And just keep doing it here. So technically when you're loading your brush, you really should have the paint going up your your bristles up to three quarters of an inch up. I don't always do that. I'm not necessarily a good example. Now you can do like a V if you want, if you want your leaves to be shaped like that. I am going to do that because I do want my leaves to be shaped like that. And yes, I am pulling in some of the red, which is fine. If you're not interested in the possibility of your paint because you're doing wet on wet, then don't do wet on wet. And meaning, give it some time to dry. Because I don't have a problem with the, pa the paint colors mixing like that. I think it's pretty. And sometimes I'm actually not even trying to avoid it, to be honest with you. I'm actually dipping a little bit of it into the white. And I'm just going to keep coming here and adding these bigger leaves wherever I can get them in. Now one thing nice, if you were to get this in drying time, you could actually very easily you know, have some of the leaves flipping, flopping up onto the actual flowers. But with them being so wet, you're going to have them mixing really badly if you do that. So, I mean, that's up to you. If it's not a problem, then don't worry about it. Do it. On this, other than doing just some simple one-stroke leaves, I am going to be doing all the same type of uh, a leaf and that one I took off too much paint and I did that that's the one thing nice about this if you feel like you did something like that it's easy to fix or if you think something isn't you know thick enough opaque enough then go back in and paint over it. Give it some more paint. That's all you can do. That will help. Definitely will help. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see on this one. I might, it's going to be nice about painting on glass. You can switch them around a little bit. And I don't have to worry about the lip of this item. Touching somebody's lip like a drinking glass would. So it's okay to come clear up to the top. If you want that to be darker, you can just go over it again with the darker color. Again, I'm not too, too awful concerned about that. Uh, let's see, let's go over here, add one. Now again, this is going over a little bit over the flower. And that's fine. I mean, I actually really like going over the flowers for my designs. I like them layered, but but once again, if it's not dry, you're going to pull some of that color in. This one's getting way too thick for me. I don't like to paint that thick on my brush. And the way you load these, you can get them really thick. You know what though? 
Let's go over and clean it up. I like to do that, as I mentioned. It's not a problem. I'm just giving it some soft movement and pulling it up. And then just pulling this down. Alright. Now, yes, I can go over the top of it and have one, you know, coming this direction if I want. Or I can do like what I like to do and then start adding my single little one stroke leaves. Because I think these are just, they're so much fun. Yeah, they're great fillers, and they definitely can be a nice little filler without having to be you know, filling up your design too much. Just a little light and whimsical, really. I'm going to add another one down here. My brush is too thick, but anyhow can do that. You can even come up in here if you wanted to uh, make some petals up into the flower if you wanted to. You know, like this. Come over and layer it a little bit. And then, like some of my brush is so full of paint, I need to just lightly put in the little lines if you want. Maybe even throw another one out here, just to make it have, make sense. That's getting too thick. Too thick for me. I'll just lightly put it over here. Alright, I'm just going to keep going and adding where I feel like it needs to be. You don't have to get too carried away with the leaves. I am obsessed with leaves, so you do not have to do what I'm doing. Definitely do not. And that definitely pulled red. Definitely. Oops. I'm going to have a lot of red in here. And I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. Not too happy about that, but that can be fixed if you wanted to. I'm not going to fuss with it at this point. But you get the gist of it. You don't have to have uh, these plain without any leaves falling into them. I kind of think sometimes that's an unnatural look. If you don't have any leaves going up over your flowers. And I'm just putting, oops, sorry, off screen. A little bit of red is showing under there. Kind of tip it there. Just keep going with it. Like I said, they don't have to be definite. You know, I'm pulling them off of these. Pulling them off of the flowers. And you can give them a little twist. 
if you want. You maybe even just make them a little bit smaller. Just kind of do a little flip with them. And it's so much fun just to kind of paint and make those decisions as you're painting. You don't have to really be certain what you're doing at the time. Just wing it. Like this one. And then I can just go just a little a little stem. Like that one didn't didn't do quite so little, but a little stem right there. And again, you can just stop if you think you're getting too crazy with it. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun painting these, really. And you can make them a little bit bigger if you want. You can actually just do some little holes. You know, from the actual stems if you want. You can make sure I didn't didn't get on that one there, but I'm just gonna leave it leave it like that. But I do have one more part to do. Or actually maybe a little bit more than just one more part. Because I have not put a center in yet. All right, so my center, I'm going to try to do this without, I'm so afraid I'm going to touch something, mess it up. All right, so on this one, I'm just doing just a little line with my liner brush. And I don't have to have them going all the same direction. You can if you want, but you do not have to. And then maybe have this one go like up a little bit. See so just how, how uh, dainty that is. Then I'm going to take my stylus. And I guess I can lay it down. I think I'm pretty good on that. Take my stylus. Dip it into, not the green, which is what I just dipped it into. Dip it into the yellow. Sorry about that. And start putting dots on here. Just put yellow dots. And then I'm going to come over here, do the same thing. And you can kind of move it around. They don't have to be in the same, no certain pattern. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Just kind of randomly place them on your little... I don't know if that's a stamen. I don't know what... I mean, that's what I used to always call it. But I'm not sure if that's the proper terminology or not. If you know, let me know down below. Alright, so I did it in yellow. To make it pop a little bit, I'm going to then throw in some white. Makes it stand out a little bit more. Definitely. Kind of reminds me of popcorn. Not sure where that came from, but... Just see how pretty these are. Kind of, uh tropical feeling. And I just really wasn't intending them to have any certain feeling. But that's kind of what they're making me feel like. Do they make you feel like that? Alright, so we have that. Now one other thing, and I just put this paint in the wrong color. Just so that you, I don't know, just some other things that you might think of doing. Again, this is more uh, transparent than what I'd like for it to be. And I am getting some of the green on there. 
I'm not I'm gonna forego that. But what I was gonna say with the, the fine liner brush that I have, you could actually do some little lines throughout here, either adding more yellow or more of the red. But like I said again, I'm messing this up because I painted it too far around. So to get it to still look halfway decent, I'm just going to stop. I think that's probably the best idea. Alright, so you get the gist of it. It's three pretty flowers. Can you imagine this with lights in it? I mean, it's just, let me see if I can back it, whoops, too far. Back it up a little bit. Let's see, just very tropical feeling, kind of kind of whimsical, kind of makes me feel happy when I look at it. Alright, that's it for today. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you have not in fact already done so. And when you are finished viewing the video, hit that share button beneath the video and share this on your social network with all your friends and family. All right, so again, I do appreciate you taking the time to view my video, and until the next time, I will see you then. Have a good one. <music>